uh, Andrea, uh, what drew you to the project? Was it the script, the director, both? I was drawn to the project by, um, by well, for, I, I, there were a few elements that I knew. I was, I was attached to the project for quite some time. At one point, I was originally perhaps going to play a different character. So my process with it slightly changed. Um, and I was drawn to it because of David, and I was drawn to it because of the extraordinary talent that I knew David's attachment or creation would then attract. And uh, it's, it was, it's almost like, you know, holding part of something but not seeing it in its entirety because it's, you don't, you don't actually, even if you have the whole script, it's, it's not biblical in the sense that it's ever evolving, right? right? Yeah. So um, you're only seeing parts of what your, what the larger creation is. And that's the exciting thing about working with Dave. But it's, it's in a sense, it almost slightly reminiscent of working with Mike Lee for me, who was the mm. first person that I made a film with. So it, there was something, there was a, a great ease and comfort that felt very familiar. Uh, John, David, and Rami, uh, talk about the development of your characters and how involved was David in that process. My approach to the character um, because of David was to think of the, t the period, like think of what, what it was like for a soldier in the 1930s, the First World, the first world War. And, uh, and that got me really excited to, to be able to find out what those soldiers experienced, uh, this whole notion of double victory, you know, and... Uh, not being accepted, couldn't even fight for our own country. Certain people that look like me, you know, and uh, the Harlem Hellfighters, the, the three, the, the, the three, uh, the Harlem Hellfighters company. Like I, I didn't know anything about them. So being able to take a deep dive into that, Charles Houston, who, um, you know, was a mentor who taught Thurgood Marshall. I mean, like I, I read his book. Like it, it's, it was amazing to know that this Ivy Leaguer also joined, you know, um, the army to fight for his country. You know, and then came back and, and fought through uh, the legal system, which was I, I had imagined Harold and, and Charles uh, Houston were colleagues or, or they knew each other. You know, so it's fun to be able to play with those kinds of possibilities in a time period. Awesome. Rami, how was character development for you? you know, as I get older, I just uh, I look for the ways that I can service the story and uh, you know, if you look back on David's films, uh, you know, they're so character driven and they have so much heart. Uh, and, you know, what he looks for is just this, this truth, this removal of all artifice. And we'd be on the phone sometimes and you guys know how David could be. He'll take about a five minute break on a phone. You think he might hang up on you, but no, it's, he's just waiting, taking uh, his, his sweet time. Like, you still there? Like, yeah, I'm here. I'm just thinking. Oh, yeah. uh, that's true. And, uh, that's true. Yeah. And, then, and then he'd come in and be like, is this, is this your voice? I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's my voice. Yeah, I like that. We should, we should have that in the movie. I'm like, my, my voice? Like, yeah, we should have that in the movie. So uh, it was the course of, you know, conversation after conversation on the phone where we just started crafting uh, this character. And, you know, at one point, the you know the character of Libby uh, was was not as substantial as she is in the film. So we started finding ways as to how to break Tom up into uh, this power couple, this power dynamic, and uh, and I think that added a, a different dimension to who Tom was uh, because he could easily you could easily just try to retrofit him into. Uh, a, a certain type of character, and uh, I think the relationship between the two of them makes it just so much more dimensional. And then I said, I want a mustache, and he said, no mustache. And he, get, he, he told me that this was, he goes, you know, Rami, I used to have a mustache, and my son just looked at it, and he said, Dad, it scares me. It scares me. And so he would look at me and he goes, people are going to be scared by the mustache, Rami. And I said, no, they're not. <laughs> People like the mustache. It's a David conversation ever. Yeah. That's a very David conversation, but. <laughs> there are many important themes in the film. Which one do you feel is the most powerful? Um, and we'll stick with the audiences after the film is over. I think there's so many 
themes in this movie, some big, some political, uh, but I think the one that is going to resonate with audiences the most is, is friendship. I think, I think love and friendship uh, kind of supersedes everything else that these characters experience in this film. And uh, it is the thing at the end. I remember the first time David showed me a rough cut of the film. He was looking at two different ways to end it. I said, well, that ending leaves me thinking, but that ending leaves me feeling. And mm -hmm. I think the magic of this movie is that it makes me feel so many things. Mm -hmm. I think you should end with the second one. And I haven't actually seen the final cut of the film, so I, I don't know how it ends, but we'll see. And, and that's, that's awesome. <laughs> I, I have to add this. When you walk out of this film, hopefully you'll be asking yourself, what was that Amsterdam for you? <laughs> what was that moment where you reckoned with the truest part of yourself? You had emotion, but you also had struggle and you had these passionate relationships and loyalties that carried you through uh, some of the darkest and most vibrant moments in your life. 